too much too much of a tangent. It's not needed. Does anybody have any issues, questions, anything that I can address first? Uh, currently, I'm in the MBY account, but I can change to any account that you uh, are at. And need me to change? I'll change quickly. Hello. Hi, Mark. It's Jen. Sorry, I'm just. I, I have a bunch of questions from a sales manager's perspective, but I don't think I think we're focusing on finance. Is that correct, Sean? Correct. I just don't want to muddy the water here. Yeah, this what this this portion of it was for the. Um, the finance. Perfect. OK. okay. Uh, so. Y'all finance people, do you have any thing I can talk about? Any any questions I can answer? Not that I can think of. I, I I Darcy was up here the other day and answered the questions that I had. Okay. Um hey, I do. This is Anita speaking. Sorry, I'm just waiting for Sean, so I'm gonna step in quickly. Um, the one thing that I have, it seems to always happen. So when you're in the finance tab and you add the bank and then you go term 60 months and then it goes to, does it affect monthly payment, uh, amortization, 240 affects monthly payment, interest rate affects monthly payment, monthly payment. It's a constant back and forth from that screen. For me, it's pretty obvious that when you change a term or an amortization, it's going to change the payment. So like, why do we have to keep going back and forth and back and forth in and out of that? Does it affect monthly payment screen? Uh, it's basically the roll through. Um, and I picked one that did. OK, so and but this one doesn't have a trade. Let me throw a trade in here. I won't save it. And I'll uh, just pick something here. And I'll put an allowance of $5,000. And so here, so when you change it to something else, so you change it to 180, the reason it's asking for it, it doesn't know what to change. Should I up the uh, uh, change the AC or the allowance on this? Is a change down payment? What do you want to change? Yes, you're 100 percent right. The monthly payment is the deep, is the logical one, um, but it's just because there's other things that could, could, you could want changed. Yeah, so. but I can't. Every time you change interest, loan term, or amortization, it doesn't affect anything but the monthly payment. So yeah. it's like, why do we have to keep going back and forth? And honestly, sometimes that system's slow, and you sit there and you wait, and then you push that button, and then you go back, and then you sit and you wait, and then the button, and you go back, and it's like. It's just a lot of back and forth for something as obvious as you know to me because right. those three the interest rate loan term am days to first it obviously affects the payment right that's all it that's all it will affect at this time right it was not we're not changing the cash price or how much money they've given yeah. us with those tabs right um all i could it, bottom line it, it does but but a shortcut i can give you is that if you let me hit x here all right, okay, here. Uh, if you do change this, uh, so I'll change it to 9%, this pops up, but see that blue highlighting around the OK button? Yeah. So this is not gonna be much of a constellation, but you don't have to you don't have to move your mouse. You can just hit your enter key and the system recognizes the um, um, default or the, uh, the OK button. So to do it quickly, so you wanna change the interest rate, you change the interest rate. The second you hit tab to change the interest rate, hit your enter key and you're, you're changed. <clears throat> Don't use your mouse. Your mouse slows things up. So let me do that one more time. You change the interest rate to 6.5. You know it's going to default to, to OK, sorry, to monthly payment. So I'm hitting the tab key and one nanosecond after hitting the tab key, I'm hitting my enter key and it changed it for me. The okay, I just wonder, is you, yeah. You're 100% right. I'm not disagreeing with you as far as the cumbersome does so. 
Yeah. Well, no, the fact that it's just obvious that it's going to change the payment. Yep. So why is it always asking us? You know, like, so for me, that's just like, why? <laughs> yep. Uh, so, it's just basically when we, whoever wrote it at the time was trying to satisfy everyone. And sometimes when you try to satisfy everyone and it's kind of like what happens if the sun doesn't come up next Tuesday at uh, by nine o'clock a.m. Well, it's sorry, it's going to come up, but it, it may not. Takes, yeah. Yeah, so, it's just when we're trying to be speedy, you know. Yeah, it's yeah that, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, that would okay, be thank a, you. Anita, that would be a stopgap, right? So if somebody inadvertently hit the interest rate and dropped it to zero, it's like a warning saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this, right? Mm. It's it's a it's a protection against making that unintentional error. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to yes. just be stepping out for five minutes. I'll be back shortly. Okay. Jennifer, uh, you had a question? Yeah, I had a question about when you print the bill of sale and there are uh, quite a few dealer options on it, it's it's printing on two pieces of paper. Um, and because of that, I will admit I've been using the Quantec bill of sale because it's quite strange to give people a bill of sale that's broken out in two pieces of paper. Um, so, so is there anything we can do about that? I, I, it only seems to happen if there's several dealer options. Mark, we were working on getting that to be legal size. Has that been changed yet? Uh, I have not heard, but I can check on it. Okay. Yeah, I, Jennifer, I just, we, we, did, we are addressing that, Jennifer, and it's supposed to be printing on a legal size document. Okay, yeah, because I just printed one moments ago and it broke it up into two pieces. So, um, so that's one thing. The other thing is sending uh sending from ids to the bank uh is also a little tricky at times um you know combining the taxes and a lot of information not transferring um has anyone else had issues with that hello yes i have jen i have to i manually double check all the time and then i correct yeah uh, let me let me actually just real quick so when you say you print the buyer's order, you're in an F&I quote, you're clicking here and yes. clicking one of these two? Usually the second one down, yeah. Okay, so it's when you click this one that you have the too long, correct? Yes. Okay, I just wanna make sure I have the right one to when I check on it, I am not uh, checking on something that's not right. Yeah. And, and like I said, it, it, it only does it when there's several dealer options. Uh, if, if not, it won't do that, so. Well, bottom uh, line is, is that Dwayne that's talking every now and then? No, Sean. it's Sean. Oh, Sean. Uh, uh, he's 100% right. Uh, bottom line is there's only so much real estate on a piece of paper. So going from an 8 and a half 11, from going from an 8 and a half 11 to 8 and a half by 14, uh, again, if you put in way too many dealer options, again, it will still have the problem with that, but hopefully you have less problems. Uh, hello, if I can just jump in, it's Robert here. I found the same issue um, as Jennifer was mentioning in Anita on legal paper as well. It's still, it's duplicating, it's making two it's, pages on it's legal still making, paper. Still making two pages, that's correct. Okay, so that, Mark, that's a formatting issue to me. You know, if if, if our finance managers are loading up the deal and those, those accessories aren't printing in the right place, it's obviously pushing everything down. Right. Um, so we need to, we need to make sure it's formatted properly that when, additions are added that they're going to the right place. I'm sitting with Kimberly this afternoon to walk through an entire deal. Um, and so we'll, we'll load it. We'll load it right up and, and figure that out on our okay. end to uh, okay. then reach back out. OK, sounds good. Sounds good. So I apologize. I interrupted you to, at that printing. Well, you were asking another question. Oh, I was just saying that there is sometimes issues, too, when you're sending from IDS to the bank. Uh, that it's not transferring the information and it, it just seems faster for me to do it manually, which as we get busy certainly won't be time efficient, but. Um, and, you're, and you're talking about the loan processing option? Yeah, when it's like, okay, so here's the thing I find. So sometimes we'll send it to one bank and once we're in the bank window, maybe it doesn't work with one bank. We don't get the approval we want, so we want to send it to another bank. In the past, we would just copy the worksheet in the dealer track uh, banking page 
but it seems with IDS, I believe you have to go back to IDS, change the bank and resend it. Is that what people are finding? It should not be. Is that is that is that what you're finding? Anybody else? Yeah. All this should be doing is um, who are you using? Uh, uh, dealer track. Dealer track. So when you transmit to dealer track, you're transmitting the information of the deal and to go to the various banks, that's a dealer track function unless somebody corrects me. Yeah, does everyone know what I mean? Like if I copy the worksheet in, in say Scotiabank because I want to now send it to TD, what I have found is I actually have to go back to IDS and change the bank in IDS and resend it to dealer track. Um, and the information's kind of garbled up sometimes. So in a pinch, I tend to just send it from Quantec because I know it's going to send over properly, which I know is not what everyone wants to hear, but. Uh, OK, so Jennifer, I, I have a question for that, because if I was in your chair, I would just be in dealer track copying it over to the next lender. That's what I mean. No, no, no. But when you do that, it doesn't like it. So <laughs> So I've been going back to IDS, changing the bank and resending it. So yeah, why are you sending? I don't, I don't understand why you're sending it from dealer from IDS again. Why are you not just copying it from in dealer track? Because they have that button to send to another bank. No, I, I know that. And, and historically, yes, what you're saying is right. That's how you would do it. But I found at least early on when I was using IDS that it, it, it somehow didn't transfer the copy. So I would go back to IDS. Um, so I'll the, play around with the, the dealer track wouldn't copy it to another finance source. When it originally came from IDS, there was some kind of glitch where it, the copying was an issue. I see. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I'll, I'll play around with it again. It's been a it's been a minute since I did that particular process because it was so time consuming. I just stopped doing it. I just would re-enter it. Yeah, because you would think you'd just copy and paste from the dealer track application to just selecting another bank. And then once you get your approval, you go back into IDS and match it to what your approval is. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. But there was some weird thing with when you copied it and it came originally from IDS that it didn't like something. OK, so so there was a hiccup there. If you can contact dealer spike and they say, yes, the reason that it does that is because IDS does this, then you would give me a hook to figure out what I'm doing wrong. OK, is are any other finance managers having that issue? Is it, it surely can't just be me? It's just you. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> yes, Matt. Uh, if I can ask a question just regarding uh, uh, customer information, um, oftentimes when the salespeople build a sales quote in an individual's name um, and then there's another person that that we have to substitute that individual for. Do we have to cancel the deal and re-input all the information? You can't swap, I guess my question is, can you swap buyer, co-buyer within the uh, quote? Yes, you can. So if you have a buyer, co-buyer, so if there was a co-buyer here, then yep. there would be a swap button here. And you uh, can swap back and forth all day long until you have a deal. So if okay. you have John here and Susan here, uh, and you can swap all day long, but the second you turn this into a deal, you have a deal with John here, Susan here. So yes, you have to cancel the deal, swap, make your swap in the finance quote, and then cap it again uh, with the with Susan over here and John over here. So what happens is that when we create the sales quote, this deal gets continually pushed because it has to be in deal status in order to market as a cap deal or a sold unit. Correct. If a new player comes aboard, then I have to cancel that and build a new deal entirely. Or can no. I go back to an F and I quote and swap and then put it back to deal? Correct, one hundred percent. Yes. So which, when you which cancel the deal, it doesn't cancel the F and I quote. So just if you have the deal is with John and Susan, and yep. you have the deal, and for whatever reason you need to swap them, mm -hmm. cancel the deal go to the finance quote that didn't nothing happen to hit hit okay. swap which will be right here and then okay. recap it okay. yep that is that is correct you are 100 correct i'm not sure what i was 100 correct about yeah i don't either <laughs> so 
you said you, you you said do you have to you I thought the question was do you have to cancel the deal to do the swap and the answer is yes you have to swap the deal okay so so let's say what we're looking at is Karen uh, reburn bought this unit okay and, and it was pushed to cap uh, to into deal status in order to solidify the sale itself so everybody's aware of that now all of a sudden Jim Brown comes in and said well Karen just came in for me but uh, I, it's the unit is for me. I have to cancel that deal and rebuild it with Jim Brown's name. Is that you correct? Have to cancel correct? that deal and just change out the customer number up here. But but do I go back to F and I quote and yep. then take Karen out and put Jim Brown in? Yep. Yes. Exactly. And then recap so, it. Okay. So so as far as the worksheet goes, the worksheet remains as it was an F and I quote. Just the customer information is being changed. Correct. And then I can push it again to deal, cap the deal. Correct. Okay. Thank you. You are. That's that is what you're correct about. Okay. Anybody? So, yeah. Sorry. So, folks, you guys have been telling me that this. This program is is cumbersome and doesn't work, and and so I'm hopeful that you've got a lot more questions to ask Mark to to find clarity and figure out uh, where the challenge is, and and is it in the program or is it our process? So uh, please don't be shy. No question is is a dumb question. It's about making everybody better at what we do and smoothing the process out for everybody in time, right? So uh, I think. Mark, at some point there was a question to me about adding and taking away products as their desk in a deal and presenting numbers to their guests to try and sell the products, right? That was a challenge, I believe, folks. Yes, I find going back and forth between screen and change and screen and change and screen and change. It's all it is very I lose them. I just lose people. So it's, it's for me and not that there I've tried that and I don't know just I can't seem to make it work for me I don't I, having a one screen change it on the screen have it visually change sort of like Quantec <laughs> works really quickly uh, it's just I I like I'm not not getting used to the system but I'm still finding that it's just so much back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and I don't know I just I do I find it hard I find it cumbersome still I think I think what if I can jump in, uh, I think that was Anita. Uh, it's just the lag time between every function that seems to stretch out uh, when you put everything together. Um, and I think that's where I guess we try to work very quickly when we're especially when we're sitting with a client selling product, taking it in, taking it out, changing terms, so on and so forth. And those three, four, five seconds in between is dead air. And it's, you know, saying that our system is slow only works for one or two times which is just a, a way of pausing it for a moment um, and i think that's where sometimes the the frustration might come from um, where you know what we've been traditionally used to it's almost it's instantaneous and that's it's that response is mid-sentence you could change what you're working with and, and then just the flow continues. And I, I think that's maybe what Anita is referring to. And I think we all experience that. Well, you, you have two groups here. And step one is to put the numbers in, which you should probably do before the customer gets there and build your platinum, gold and silver. And uh, do you want platinum? Uh, then you extol the benefits of, and by the way, just I know you know this, but I'll say it anyway. This button down here that shows package display form. If you had two monitors, when you press that, then that package form could be on the customer screen that they're looking at. Uh, so that screen right here could be what is on the second monitor uh, with the products that you decided to pr present to the customer. Um, and then that's that's fine, but if they're not selling menu like this and they're manually putting in the product on their deal screen. Uh, I got you. Like, got you. Well, that that is the to what everything you just said is is accurate. The the beauty of using this. Let me just go ahead and show you, and then we'll we'll go back the other way. But uh, you sell it here. Whatever you pick uh, is. Well, I go ahead and click on. Uh, let me drag it up a little bit. 
so I can see the bottom of it. So once I select it, uh, First Canadian Island Care, Rip, Tear and Burn, that basically just filled in everything in this tab. And at this point, all that was was a quick way to do things. And the customer says, you know what? I don't want this. Just right click on it, hit delete, and that removes it. So I don't care what the package put in there. The package was put in there for convenience for you to make things quick. Um, and that way you're you're only dealing with you have you have a starting point, I guess I'm trying to say. They don't want to pay a thousand dollars, they want to pay seven fifty. So the packages are just a way of of um, accelerating the speed of filling this in, and then you if you need to make changes, then you come here and make any changes that you want to. And how do I add product to that? If you have product, you like that what I took out. Like rip, tear, and burn. I'll just go ahead and get rid of that one too. So, either you got rid of it, didn't mean to, or it wasn't there in the first place. You just go down to the next line and you select rip, tear, and burn. So, rip, tear, and burn is a rip, tear, and burn right there. You hit tab and uh, rip, tear, and burn. You have rip, tear, and burn again. And then you put in term 48 months, cost to the customer 800 and income 200. Now, by the way, you don't have to do this with a customer there. All you have to do is this one with a customer. Income could wait until the customer's left. But you just hit the drop down and select whatever you, or product you want. If you want to add product manually here, which is fine. Okay, and can we can we look at, at uh selecting what insurances we want do we do that from here i yes and or like if it's like code life net. insurance and accident health insurance critical illness how do we oh. select those yep if you hit if you want credit life then uh, credit life would be and you want buyer or co-buyer and it com automatically puts it in there for you and there's my monthly payment right there Yes. So folks, folks are because this seems pretty simple and easy and quick to me. Am I missing something? Are you folks working in this screen? Are you using this opportunity? Sean? Yes. I know you're going to hate me by the end of all this. I'm sorry and I apologize. I, I would uh, never for me, hate. Yeah. for me, it's this and I'm just going to be really honest. OK, just because I hope I'm speaking for everyone because this yeah. is what I hear from lots of us. If you were just to take two minutes and look at the Quantex screen, it is precision. It is like you want, you don't want that insurance, take it out. Just hit the button, hit the button, hit the button. You want that, you got this, you got this, you take that out. We have all our insurances, so that's four, three insurances, plus we have our warranty, plus we have our rip, tear, and burn. We have so many products. If everything is on one screen, it's preloaded. You enter it, yes, 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 or you don't think you want that, you know the payment would change to this. You hit a button. You want to, you right. know, I'm gonna, I think Sean will offer you maybe a couple hundred dollars off if you take everything. Change the numbers right in front of you on the screen instead of always having to drop a window. Everything is, you just press it, take it off, add it, change it. And by and the time that customer leaves, we're done. Yeah, and I understand that, but it looks to me like I can do the exact same thing here, Anita. Like, I know, it, but if we drop no down those windows, it's it's, yeah. it's no well, but you're dropping down to delete or you're zero and out. It's sec multi milliseconds to do that. No, and I, yeah. And your, but, and your insurance is the same. If you're gonna change your insurance policies and all of that, and your your uh, your rates or not rates, but the um, the term you're gonna do the insurance for, you've got to go into multiple screens to do that anyway in Quantex. Yeah, and I don't disagree. Different here. Like. I'm getting I more guess, used I, to I this. guess my question is, are you using, have you used this screen to do that or are you using yes. something different? Not with the customer in front of me because I'm still feeling sloppy in it. I feel sloppy. I just don't, and the thing problem with me too is, is that I still find there is a difference in insurance, insurance numbers. It might not always be lots, but it's enough that we're always adjusting it. So I just, I'm just, I have, I feel I'm getting way better at this IDS thing. I do. It's just, it's not, it's still not speedy. <laughs> yeah. 
because this I got to tell you, folks, this this looks to me. And again, I'm sitting with Kim today, so I'm going to have her do a deal and then I'm going to do my first deal uh, that I've ever done in this program in F&I. So we'll know fairly soon if what's going on. But this looks to me on the surface like it'll do exactly what we need to do in a very quick manner. And it's adjusting the payment with every delete or add that he's that Mark is doing. I've got a payment down there. Now, yep. one thing that I would ask Mark is. If we're on a bi-weekly, where does that bi-weekly payment show on this screen? Um, you have to go back and change it. Actually, whoever said that, she is correct. <laughs> it's not showing bi-weeklies here. It would just be one tab, oh, sorry, one tab here to see the bi-weeklies. And I also had a, a, a weekly one the other day, so I, I didn't. I wasn't able to do it in here. Would you not be able to do it in here with days to first adjust it, Mark, to change it to a weekly? If you went days to first seven instead of fourteen. Um, no, days to first is. is it's days uh, to first payment. Can you do a, a weekly with uh, national, the Bank of National Bank of Canada? Can you do a weekly payment with the, the switch BNC? it? Switch it to uh, Scotia Bank or TD. They both do weekly. Who? Scotia. BNS. This one here. Yes. Now, this is strictly days to first from the date you paper it. When is your first payment due is 14? It's minimum is actually 30. And now I change it back to 14. I don't have an answer for that. Let me research an answer for that. I don't have an answer for you. That I can find out or Kimberly can let you know when you talk to her this afternoon. At this point, I don't have an answer for you on that. So just a quick, quick question. Um, Kim doesn't have a mic, so we're just texting back and forth. It's Jen. Um, like I can see you doing all this and it's very, very quick. Um, I've also tried to watch Lexi and Kim do this. And similar to what we have on the sales side, we just get a spinning icon and spinning and spinning and yeah. spinning. So is it perhaps, um, do we maybe not have enough internet? Do we have too many users? Is there a physical problem that might, because it does thing moves that fast when we do it. Um, uh, that I don't know. What would, I, I, I'd have to see the issue and I don't, I don't know the answer to that one either. Uh, everybody that's been here training, Darcy, the other Mark, everybody, we've asked them to to put that in their report. So I guarantee you it's in report somewhere. So maybe okay. you can just double check that. Now, by the way, just to say, I, 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 hopefully they've reported that and I, I'll, I'll put, I've got it on my list. I'll check it. But uh, someone or you're referring to the drop it. So if you know the codes, you don't have to hit the drop downs. You can just put the code in and hit tab and it'll pit it up and just you can make it really quick at that point. So if you know the code you're wanting, you read, you know, RTB, SAL, um, you can really blast through it. Everything we do though is based on biweekly payments. So I'm sure, sure between you and Sean, we can figure that out, but we can't have that being a monthly payment at the bottom and having to click back a screen for them to find out what the, what the, Bi-weekly payment is every time isn't ideal either, especially when you get the spinning lag time. I can see why the frustration would happen. So if we can either get that at the bottom of that screen to to update a bi-weekly payment so they don't have to click back or upgrade our internet or whatever we have to do to make sure that it doesn't take, you know, we have to sing twinkle twinkle little star between the, the time it gets back from screen to screen. Um, that would be huge. 
Just I, FYI, Jennifer, twinkle, twinkle, little star makes my daughter smile every time she hears it. So, <laughs> just, but I well, don't, dis I don't disagree with you at all, Jennifer, not one bit, and nor do I disagree with the team. You know, speed is is money, and and if we're having lag time, and I don't disagree, I, I disagree with the fact that we should have to flip back and forth to a screen to see what the payment is. That other screen mark should show you, however you have this populated on that screen, that payment should be posted on that screen. They okay. should move over. Right. They should not have to tap back and forth. And I have that in my notes, and I will see what can be done. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, you still have your hand up? Oh, no, that's just from before. Sorry, okay. I'll put it down. Take your hand down. <laughs> By the way, I sing Highway to Hell, not Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Your child is 20 minus three. <laughs> no, I meant in between the spinning. <laughs> oh, oh, is that? Oh, I feel like I feel like that's. Uh, yeah, OK, we'll move on. Now, by the way, when my wife hears that Highway to Hell is on TV, she just smiles. So. <laughs> so, anyway, I was going to say I would try seeing that to Lexi and Kim um, next time they're really <laughs> frustrated, but I don't know how well that would go over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Any other anybody? questions, anybody? Oh, one one question, Mark, that I'm getting is the email alerts when they send when they cap a deal. Uh, and I might be misspeaking here. Somebody can correct me. But when the finance department takes a deposit and they cap a deal, service is getting an email alert. Correct. Correct. OK, I know so, I know how to fix that now. The fact that service is getting ones on ones that aren't actual deals yet. Yeah, I found out just today um, because we were doing that. That was causing a lot of confusion with service and I would go over and verbal everything so that they weren't confused. But Mike shared with me today uh, something he found out, um, I think, from Kent last week is that when it asks you, do you want to send uh, this to service? You just hit no. And I was hitting yes, thinking, well, I didn't I didn't think there was an option to say no. And if you say no, then it, it then it then it won't send them an email. OK, perfect. So like, that's been, yeah. Is everybody, so everyone, everybody doing that? Everybody's aware of that? Yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I only just found out, but that's great. OK, good. good. That's been fixed. Good to hear. Any other not stupid questions? And remember, no question is a dumb one. <laughs> Come on, folks, this is it. This is your chance to shine. Oh, I think I think what somebody touched on it a minute ago. I don't know if it got answered. Um, are the insurance numbers all correct now? The. Not uh, so they don't have to go between the cell website or the first Canadian website. They can do everything in here. Has that been adjusted? The rate tables should be accurate. They've been tested numerous times. I, I did one yesterday. It was out by three dollars in some cents, so I made the adjustment in IDS. Yeah, because you can manually override an IDS, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. Crickets. Uh, Mark, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Um, as I'm sure my team greatly does. I know the team in Mill Bay. Uh, when I asked the ambassadors, they uh, they were very excited um, and happy to have had this opportunity. Um, so thank you for taking the time. And You're most welcome. Take out. I'm sure there'll be questions more to follow and, okay. and perhaps the need for a couple of one on ones or four on ones, so to speak. And um, but we'll cross those bridges when we get to it. Uh, folks, I know we uh, we haven't had a meeting in a little while, but just I'll take this opportunity. Mark, I apologize for monopolizing your screen, but uh, I'll be sitting with Kimberly today and walking, as I mentioned, walking through a couple of deals um, so that I have a complete understanding and head office has a complete understanding as to what the challenges are and if we can find a solution together or, or what we need to do. So. 
um, that'll be coming and I will report back to you all on how that was on uh, Tuesday afternoon. So please make sure you're available for Tuesday's meeting so that we can cover off anything we've missed and we can recap on uh, on how today went this afternoon. OK. Yep. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, thank you all very much and uh, go sell RVs. There you go. All okay. right, take care. Thanks. Thanks.